In today's video, we'll be overclocking the Intel Core i9 11900K processor all the way up to 5.5 GHz using the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Tachyon motherboard. But before we jump into the overclocking, let's first talk a little bit more about the hardware that we'll be using in this guide. Along with the Intel Core i9 11900K processor and Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Tachyon motherboard, we will be using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 4266 memory sticks, a Seasonic Prime 850 watt platinum power supply, and of course, EK Quantum water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the Intel Core i9 11900K processor, let's first have a look at the performance at stock settings. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 3.5 GHz with 1.035 volt. The average CPU temperature is 53 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 125 watt. When running Prime95 small FFT with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 3.8 GHz with 1.108 volt. The average CPU temperature is 50 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 126 watt. One of the key new overclocking features that come with Rocket Lake is called per core ratio limit. Essentially, it allows you to set a maximum turbo ratio for each individual CPU core. In our case, we found that one of the two favorite cores is slightly better than the other. So, we are able to run it at 5.5 GHz. By setting a per core limit ratio, we ensure that in the situation that one core is active and the 55x CPU ratio should be applied, it is applied only to our best core and not to the others. Upon entering the BIOS, Press F2 to enter advanced mode. In the tweaker menu, set ring ratio to 43. Set AVX offset to 5. Set AVX 512 offset to 6. Enter the advanced CPU settings submenu. Set ring to core offset down bin to disabled. Set frequency clipping TVB to disabled. Set active turbo ratios to manual. Set turbo ratio 1 core active to 8 core active to 55. 54, 52, 52, 51, 51, 51, 51. Set turbo per core limit control to manual. Set turbo core 1 ratio limit to turbo core 8 ratio limit to 54, 54, 55, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54. Leave the advanced CPU settings submenu. Set extreme memory profile to profile 1. Set vCore voltage mode to adaptive vCore. Set VF offset mode to selection. Set VF.6 offset to 50 millivolts. Set VF.7 offset to 50 millivolts. Set VF.8 offset to 125 millivolts. Then save the settings and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. As you can see, we are reaching the highest performance levels we've seen out of all overclocking strategies. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.8 GHz with 1.268 volts. The average CPU temperature is 91 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 325 watt. When running Prime95 small FFT with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 5.1 GHz with 1.275 volt. The average CPU temperature is 75 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 287 watt. All right, let's wrap this up. There's two things I want to talk about. The Intel Core i9-11900K overclocking results and the Tachyon unlocking the power limit by default. First of all, I'm very happy we're reaching 5.5 GHz in a stable configuration the new Rocket Lake overclocking feature of per core ratio limit did the trick as allowed me to restrict the highest frequency to only be set on my best core. The Z590 Aorus Tachyon motherboard is certainly an overclocker's motherboard. I want to focus your attention on unlocking the power limits by default. As a performance enthusiast, I think it's great that motherboard vendors provide customers with additional out-of-the-box performance. In the case of the 11900K, unlocking the power limits brings up to 25% extra performance in benchmarks like Cinebench R23. In my opinion, unlocking the power limits has, for years now, been mischaracterized as running out of specification. I think we should think of the Turbo Boost default constraints as 
the minimum performance Intel offers to its customers. However, we all know that high-end cooling and high-end motherboards can offer so much more headroom for those CPUs. So I'd say, you know, as long as the CPU runs at the factory fused frequencies and the factory fused voltage and the factory fused TJ Maxx, we're running within spec. And if that's at 125 watt or 350 watt, well, that's just up to us to decide. That's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Till the next time.